What's up guys, welcome to a new video. So in this one, I'm gonna show you how to fix the traffic but no sales problem. So I talk to a lot of you on Instagram or in the comments section of my videos and I use you guys pretty much as inspiration for the video topics. So depending on what I talk to people about will depend on kind of what kind of content I put out. And this seems like quite a common problem that a lot of people are having at the moment. They're getting hundreds of visits, sometimes thousands in cases, but yet they're not converting that traffic into sales. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix it, how to identify the problem and then most importantly how to fix it before we jump into it though just a very quick favor for me to ask from you guys 70% um, of you sat there watching this video right now aren't subscribed to my channel so please do make sure you hit that subscribe button um, if you enjoy the video and it helps you out then please do make sure you hit that like button as well um, and as always any comments questions video suggestions whatever it is just comment them down below I do read every single one so if there is something that you want to ask me that you want to ask me just simply post it below and I will get back to you that being said then let's jump straight into the video so before we jump into the reasons of why they might not be purchasing for you is critical. It's really important that you answer these two questions about the store and about the kind of traffic that you're sending to your store. So question number one that you need to ask yourself is what is the quality of the traffic that you're sending to your store? So if you are targeting worldwide, for example, you need to go through the breakdowns, which I'm going to show you how to do in a second, country by country and see where that traffic is coming from. Typically then traffic, so visits that come from countries um, within, so Africa or Asia or South America, typically these would be considered low quality traffic and they will convert less as it is so if the majority of your traffic is coming from these places um, then that could be the reason why the next thing as well is is your store set up for international sales correctly so do you have shipping rates enabled for the countries you're advertising to because if you don't they won't be able to make a purchase do you have a currency converter for example um, what I've found in the past is getting Americans to come onto my British store and spend um, in Great British pounds can be quite difficult so unless you have those currency converters set up, the multi-currency checkouts set up, then it's going to be difficult to convert those customers to. So these are two things you need to check um, straight away. And then as I mentioned um, a second ago, I'm going to show you now how to use the breakdowns in your ad manager to find out where the traffic is coming from. So if we head over to my ad manager account, there's two particular ad sets. Um, I'm going to show you why I've picked these particular two ad sets later on in the video for the second question. But for this point, then I'm going to show you how easy it is just to go into the breakdowns and find out the different information see where the traffic is coming from basically so on the right hand side here you can see the breakdown I'm going to go by delivery you've got age gender locations but what we're interested in then is country so if I select this particular one it's going to give me all the list of different countries but as you can see because I focus primarily I'll just get rid of that because I focus primarily on a UK market you can see all of it is coming from the UK nothing from Spain or Turkey or Sweden or Cyprus or Canada or Barbados so you need to check this for yourselves go into your ad manager accounts and go to the breakdowns by country and Facebook is really good at spending your money um, not necessarily in the best places but where you get the most traffic from so if you go into your breakdowns for example and see that you're getting tons of traffic from Greece but not really from elsewhere then what you need to do is actually go back into your targeting and exclude Greece not include it in that list of countries to target and what that will do is it will force Facebook to stop targeting Greece as a country and then focus your budget on other countries this is why I always recommend in selecting the countries that you want to sell to rather than just targeting worldwide because then essentially the scope is so massive that you're not necessarily always going to get the best kind of traffic for the money that you're spending if we move on to the second question then that you must again apply this to the traffic you're sending to your store and that is how much traffic have you actually had and this is where I'm going to show you why I've picked those particular two ad sets. So just a kind of general tip or not a tip, a st statistic if you like and that is the average conversion rate of a Shopify store in May 2020 so this is very recent was 1.6%. This is the source as well, this is the website so if we scroll to the top so little data surveyed nearly 2000 Shopify stores in May 2020 and found the average conversion rate for Shopify was 1.6%. And essentially what this means to us is for every 100 visits we get to our Shopify store, we're going to approximately convert 1.6 of that, which will equivalent, if that's even a word, to one order per 100 visits. Now, this isn't to be mistaken with that for every 100 visits you pay for through paid marketing, you're going to convert 1.6% than this. It should be higher than this. And the reason being is because paid marketing is very targeted, especially Facebook ads. So to kind of illustrate this, so you have like a rough ballpark figure, if we head back to my ad manager account, 
Um, I'll just get rid of these breakdowns just so it's a bit easier to see. Um, and I'm going to open up my calculator and we'll use this top ad set as an example. So to work out the conversion rate of your ads, it's really easy to do. If we take the amount of purchases, so four, nine five divide this by the amount of link clicks so these are people who have clicked the link in my ad and then therefore gone to my website and essentially visited it so four nine five divided by six double oh six times it by 100 gives this particular ad set a conversion rate of 8.2%. And if we do the same for this second ad set below then we have 376 purchases um, divided by the 4080 so 4080 link clicks times by 100 gives this particular ad set which is performed better we can see the ROAS is much better at 9.2 percent now why that might seem quite high in comparison to um, this particular website little data what you've got to consider is that we don't know what Shopify stores these guys have taken this um, average conversion rate from um, stores that get a majority of organic traffic obviously the conversion rate is going to be a lot lower and the reason being with organic traffic obviously you can't control that in terms of the targeting versus paid marketing whereas with Facebook ads you can be very specific with the audience you're targeting so you would expect it to be a higher quality traffic and therefore convert um, at a higher percentage as well the next point to consider would be that traffic quality increases with time due to Facebook optimization so if you think you have this potential problem and you've only had say 200 visits to your store then my recommendation would be to keep going until you've had at least 1,000 visits. The reason being is because Facebook works on past data. So the more data, the more traffic it sends to your store, then the more it's gonna learn about who your ideal customer is and who's actually gonna purchase your product. So in essence, what I'm trying to say is that the quality of those first 100 visits that you get to your store from those um, ads won't be as good as say the 10th lot of 100 visits. So sometimes you just need to give Facebook time um, to optimize and actually increase the quality of the traffic. But once you've done these two things then and you're confident you've had over 1,000 visits from quality countries, then it's time to move on to step two, which is identifying the problem. So if you are getting high quality traffic to your store um, in significant amounts and they're still not converting, then the problem lies on your Shopify store slash your product page, depending on where you're actually directing people to. So what I've done is I've bullet pointed the main reasons customers will leave without making a purchase. I look at and review a lot of Shopify stores and these are the main reasons or the biggest mistakes I see people making. So number one by far is credibility. If your store doesn't come across as credible, people won't trust your store. If people don't trust your store, they're not going to buy from you. Um, it's just a fact. There's no two ways about it. Um, and to increase and build the credibility of your store, here are some of the things you need to do. So number one is you need to have contact information, not just an email address, but try and have a contact form, try and have a telephone number, try and have an actual physical address, try and have a live chat option like Tidio, something like that um, from the Shopify app marketplace that you can install in your store. The more ways you can give customers to get in contact with you, the more credible you come across, the more established, the more legitimate you come across as a business. Number two is you need to have shipping information. If you don't have this on your store, the customers aren't gonna know when they're gonna receive that item, if at all. If you think about it, whenever you go shopping online, something that you'll always check out is how fast are you gonna receive that product. So if there's no shipping information on your store, if people can't find that information, it's gonna put doubts in their mind and ultimately lead to them leaving without making a purchase. Purchase. The third way to build credibility for your store, your brand, your product is 100% reviews. Reviews are really important. Just a quick Google search and this particular study from Revo found that 50 more reviews per product can mean a 4.6% increase in conversion rates. This can be the difference between being profitable and not being profitable. Um, according to a further study by iPerceptions, 63% of customers are more likely to make a purchase from a site that has user reviews. So that just clearly illustrates the importance and how how powerful and how much difference they can actually make to the success of your business. Um, number four is legal pages. These are just to be expected. GDPR notices, those cookies bar. People expect to see them nowadays. It's just the norm if you like. And then the final point is the social media presence. The bigger following you have, um, the more legit and the more trustworthy you're going to come across. It's just a fact, the way things are set up nowadays. If somebody sees a business with zero followers on Instagram, zero likes on Facebook, selling the same product versus 
is a business that has say 10,000 likes and 10,000 followers, they're gonna go with the one that has the most followers because it comes across as more credible and more trustworthy. Second point is the price. Your product can be too cheap or too expensive. If people are actually coming to your store, assuming you're not click baiting them and you are actually advertising the product at hand, there's a reason they've clicked on the link and gone to your site, it's because they're interested. So the price could be putting them off. If it's a really kind of luxurious looking product and you're selling it really cheap, people expect to pay top price for a top quality product. So if it's really cheap, it can be a bit mismatched and put people off. Same vice versa, if you're selling a really cheap product but selling it for really expensive, people aren't stupid, they're gonna pay what they think is fair, especially for products in which it can be easy to guess the price. So just make sure you double check the prices against other Shopify stores, against other websites um, that are selling the same product. And then the final point, which kind of encompasses a lot more points is design. The amount of poorly designed stores I see um, is quite high in fact. And when I'm talking about poor design spaces, then I mean things like avoiding white spaces. If you go into Amazon, there's hardly any white space. Fill it full of images and information that's relevant to the product, to your business, to your brand. Don't use pixelated images. Again, another common problem I see on um, a lot of Shopify stores. And make sure the information is easy to read. And when I mean this, if we skip ahead to fonts, um, use a color that's easy to read. So for example, don't have a black background and then have like a light blue colored font that's gonna be difficult to read. If people have to squint or it's just hard to consume the information, people are so lazy nowadays that if it's not really easy and clear, they're just gonna leave and go elsewhere or they'll get distracted. So just make sure you keep it simple. Go for a white background, go for a Helvetica or Lake Toe font with a black text. So often the simple and kind of like the fundamentals and basics work the best. In terms of the images, make sure you just remove any Chinese brand names or logos um, using like a photo editing software. Um, quite often a lot of images as well will have kind of like text and things that explain how to use it, especially if it's like a functional product. So anything that has broken English, again, just doesn't look very professional, um, just doesn't look very trustworthy. Next up, make sure all the images are of uniform sizes. They're all the same kind of pixelized size, so they're all square, etc. It's one of those housekeeping rules that kind of, it takes a lot of time, but it's worth doing. If somebody has to scroll through images and the text is bouncing up and down the page, it just doesn't look professional, just doesn't look very good in my opinion. And then finally, just make sure the images are really high quality. So again, what the Chinese love to do is they take some random stock image and then really poorly Photoshop their product onto that image. Don't use these images. Again, if it looks unprofessional, don't put it on your store because it's just gonna doubt, it's gonna make your customers doubt how good your business is essentially. And it ultimately it comes down to the whole credibility thing. If they don't trust you, um, they're not gonna spend any money with you. The final point then, something I see people mess up on all the time or just become lazy to is product descriptions. So, so point number one is a nice layout. Just keep this simple. Don't write paragraph after paragraph and essay. Just keep it bullet pointed, nice and simple to the point. And just make sure anything that you put in that product description actually helps sell the product. So whether it's a explanation or a GIF of how it works, a feature or benefit of it, uh, make sure you proofread it as well. Use a tool online if you have to, to make sure there's no spelling or grammar mistakes. Um, I've already mentioned, just make sure that whatever information there actually helps sell the product. And then as a final kind of no-no, um, just make sure that you do not copy and paste the description from AliExpress. This will not help you um, in any way whatsoever. As a final point then to kind of leave you with for this video is think, would I buy from this website? So once you've done your website, go through it and just keep asking yourself, would you trust it enough would you actually buy from your website and if you feel as if you might be a bit biased or you're struggling to kind of differentiate then ask your friends or family but don't tell them it's your store send them the link to the products and say hey i'm thinking about buying this but i'm not sure about the store would you trust it see what they say if they come back and say yes or trust it go ahead buy it order it then great but if they don't then perhaps you have to consider some of the points that i've spoken about in this video with that being said then guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up there. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it's helped you out, it's taught you something new or at least given you some ideas to consider. If that is the case, please do make sure you subscribe as well for regular content. Please make sure you hit that like button too. Um, and finally, if you are looking for um, a video course that comes with my full support and guidance, um, please do make sure you check out my Ecom Academy. There will be a link in the video description below where you can go check it out, see all the kind of different support resources and content that you get access to. Um, there is a callback feature too. So if you want to jump on a phone call with me, just to go through any questions you have about it, and we can do that for free as well. Apart from that, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.